If you want to accelerate the autonomous driving revolution, you don't travel alone. And on today's edition of All Things Automotive, we're going under the hood with Aurora for a look at how the cloud helps scale out simulation and transfer learnings between vehicle types. Then we'll look around the corner with our Director of Public Policy to talk about how regulation and frameworks, together with more data, can increase public confidence in autonomy. Let's see the road. Go on a cloud innovation journey with me, Stefano Marzani, as I'm joined by guest experts and mobility leaders to look at the drivers of transformation on all things automotive. And now it's time to bring on our special guest to arrive, Tim from Aurora Innovation. Hey, Stefano. Great Such to see you Such a again. pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Such a pleasure having you here. So who's Aurora? We're focused on autonomous trucks and bringing the benefits of self-driving safely, quickly, and broadly. It's a very exciting space, as you know better than anyone, uh, how fast it's moving. So. Yeah, that's surely, surely fast. And talking about fast, uh, we discussed about Aurora and the beautiful case we presented about simulation at scale. It was November, but you are a startup and it's known, <laughs> the startup who had the light of speed, right? So what happened in these months? First off, you know, we went public in, in last Just a small thing. Right? Small <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was really exciting. So wow. um, then we more than doubled the amount of miles that we're driving wow. for our commercial customers hauling loads every single day. So a lot of problems more. To solve. <laughs> <laughs> more problems, but also more learnings, right? Yes. And third, we started bringing in a whole new tool suite, Aurora Beacon. So when you're operating an autonomous fleet, uh, you have unique challenges around self-driving, things like uh, scheduling and dispatch that are, that are challenging to solve in their own right. And then fourth is around, you know, we hit a key milestone around transferability between trucks and then ride sharing as well. So, so this is where the Aurora driver, uh, we have a common core and this is vehicle agnostic. And so being able to take our custom hardware, our custom sensors and the software we build on top of that, and then that transferability to be able to move that from our trucks yeah. and then build that to ride sharing. So we were able to have a really exciting demonstration with our partner Toyota and show that ride sharing capability as well. Autonomous driving is still an evolving sector though. So there are still challenges and opportunities, right? And uh, what do you see in the near future as the most important point you need to work on? Yeah, really this is around, um, you know, moving quickly, but then how do you move quickly safely is yes. the real challenge, right? And so the Aurora driver, we're not just, um, I think when we spoke last fall, we were already hauling loads from Dallas to Houston, but now we've added an additional route, Dallas to El Paso. Wow. And I don't know if you drove in that part of no. West Texas in that part of the country. That's a 12 hour one way route. Wow, it's and a long so, one. Yeah, and there's huge amount of, of challenges. Um, in that one route in a given week, we'll see you know, 40 or so construct, complex construction zones in any given week, wow. constantly changing. Um, so I, we have to do a huge amount of testing to make sure that's, uh, that the Aurora driver can handle all of these situations. And then, of course, cloud and AWS, that's where a lot of that testing comes in. So. But since we, since we mentioned her a couple of times, can we have the Aurora driver in action? Can yeah, let's, that? let's show a little bit of, of what that looks like. You know, the, the first is, you know, what you and I would see uh, going down the road. And you can see this is a complex situation, no matter what, a construction zone, poor lighting, uh, having to weave around, actually weave outside of a zone. It's a hard situation for anyone. And then what we've done here is we actually capture these scenarios we see every day out on the road and we turn those into a scenario for our simulations that we can run. So to amplify the problem in a certain sense, to go for those 40 to 40,000. Exactly. Mean. And then we can make other permutations. You know, we just talked transferability. We can, yeah, here nice. you can see on one side, we have the truck, but then the second side, we can actually bring our ride sharing in and how would we need to maneuver. Yeah. So those are the types of permutations we are able to make and extend that testability. That's just amazing. And so, you know, I think this is where cloud, you know, is pretty critical in, in this role. If, if we have to go drive to get feedback, that's 
you know, about the slowest way we can get feedback to our engineers every time we make changes. So we capture thousands of those scenarios and and then those those actually become, you know, I think of it as a forever test. Uh, you know, you have that now. We have that stored in the cloud. We can run that whenever we need to to test those exact yeah. situations. It's very hard to reproduce always on the road. Yeah, yeah. We, do, we don't call it internally, you know, forever loop. We call it infinity loop. Infinity loop. loop. Say, yeah, because I like it, that. It, it never ends. You it know? never ends. <laughs> you know, collect data, constant. generate, simulate, and uh, train and deploy and. Start again. Can we look at architecture about uh, you know sure. how you use some of these yeah, services let's, let's to scale out? In. Yeah. So I think what you, your audience is probably interested in is you know as an engineer, what does this look like? You and I are engineers by training, and we we understand this. Yeah. So you know, on demand, if I'm an engineer building our autonomy stack, maybe I'm building a new version of an ML model. I might be testing our motion planner, our mapping, even our, our new hardware. Yeah. Um, those would be the types of things we can use as a, an engineer. I can execute a GUI and I can just run those scenarios like that example we just showed yeah. or through a command line. Uh, we also schedule blocks of those uh, simulations to run and give us feedback periodically throughout the day and throughout the week. Uh, but then I might check in some code. And that code needs to get merged. We have a large monorepo. Uh, so we have the, the you know, CI, CD workflow where we incorporate those changes in your pull request into the monorepo. Then we build those types of artifacts. And then the output of that, uh, we actually build directed acyclic graphs. So workflow management. Oh, yeah. Exactly, nice. yeah. exactly. And so that's executing those various simulations and, and executing various simulations of our autonomy stack on the cloud. And um, this is at ginormous scale. It's not just one or two. We're doing this for hundreds of engineers are making changes every day. Wow. And then so... So hundreds of commits every day, essentially. Yes, hundreds. And so, you know, we're, we rely on, on you all and we partner with you all for, for um, scaling that capacity. So we... This can't all just fit in just a single Kubernetes cluster. This is multitudes of clusters, uh, thousands of GPUs, hundreds of thousands of CPUs that we're scaling to run these. And then the real part is the output of those autonomy stacks. Uh, we output those results and then we yeah. store those in, through an API and store it in a database. And then we build build dashboards on top of that. Really, what we're trying to do is, you know, give that engineer feedback on that change that they made, and said, you know, has the Aurora driver progressed or have we regressed? Yeah. And so that helps us really understand, you know, that innovation. But are we moving quick? Give us quick feedback. Yeah. How do you keep things moving and keep that feedback yeah. loop, that, that infinity Agile. loop that you described? Technology is just a part of it, right? All these <laughs> cycles. Because uh -huh. uh, in autonomous driving, we see that uh, technology innovation go hand in hand with regulations. We saw we recently read a lot of articles, right, about the status of regulations, uh, how that is modifying uh, with the features that are already available on, on the road and so on. What's your point of view on that? For autonomous vehicles, innovation and safety, those go hand in hand, right? You can't have one without the other. And it's going to be critical for really scaling this from R&D to a scalable business and industry and, you know, to give that confidence. So we absolutely at Aurora see that as a critical part. So our safety case framework, that's the foundation of building uh, that uh, self-driving uh, safety case. The cloud is the key to that rapid innovation. As we increase the miles in the simulation, we apply those learnings and we apply them then and then they go back out on the road to our vehicles every day. Yeah. So. Awesome. Tim, uh, another great conversation. Thank you so much uh, for joining the show today. And uh, I really enjoyed the conversation as I hope our viewers. My pleasure. I always like look forward to talking with you. Thank you. So Blair, thank you so much uh, for joining this session and uh, to provide uh, some expert analysis uh, to what's around the corner in the automotive sector and especially related to autonomous driving. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thank you. So Blair, we saw that autonomous systems are diffusing more and more. 
not just in the form of robot access, just, just at the beginning, but uh, in terms of ADAS, level two, level three functionality. But at the same time, recently we saw some of the reports from NHTSA, I think, talking about an unexpected high number of car crashes, incidents due to automation. So what's your take on that? It was interesting to see NHTSA take that step to put those uh, reports out. I think this is an indicator of a regulator that is going to probably take a little bit more of a hands-on approach uh, in this space as we go forward. But as, as I look at it and I say that, I actually think there's an opportunity to be presenting a lot more data uh, to the public in terms of what's happening. And frankly, that there's an opportunity for NHTSA to be receiving a lot more data uh, from manufacturers uh, and developers in this space. Uh, if you actually look at what they reported, uh, it is purely incidents that happened. Um, that doesn't even take into account, like, where are all those moments where the systems worked correctly and there was actually good outcomes? Um, so as the industry moves forward, uh, if I were to encourage kind of the broader industry industry discussion, I'd actually like to see a lot more kind of data sharing yeah. taking place, kind of similar to what you see in the aviation industry. Yeah, because maybe there are some cases where the automation helps to avoid the car crash. Exactly. And this data is not obviously reported, uh -huh. right? So to provide the clearer picture of our all systems. On the other side, we see private uh, companies like Aurora introducing their safety case framework or similar initiative for mobile life, for example, with the RSS, right, their system. And how do you see the usage of framework like this one mm -hmm. in the context of automotive and autonomous driving? Well, the thing I take the kind of the most encouragement out of uh, Aurora and the others, uh, like Mobilize, kind of what they've put forth in this concept of the safety case framework, uh, is that clearly um, there's so many different benefits that we could get out of autonomous vehicles. But these organizations are putting safety right there, top and center yes. in the discussion. So um, most of us in the industry have heard the stat that there is almost uh, 43,000 uh, people who lost their lives on the highways in the U.S. in, the, uh, in 2021. Um, so this technology has an incredible opportunity to uh, address and potentially drive down the curve. Um, to be able to get there, we have to determine and ensure that the technology itself is safe. Yeah, that's interesting. Absolutely. Um, and talking about uh, a, you know the technological element and the cloud specifically, from Aurora, we learned that there's an interplay between the safety case mm -hmm. and the technology that they need to create fast loop of iteration, right? Mm -hmm. Generating new AI and deploy it, collect data and continue infinity loop. Mm -hmm. So why we are interested in all of this as AWS? Yeah, well, it, at its heart, it's, uh, it kind of goes back to what I, at least for me, that, that safety case, that 43,000 mm -hmm. lives on the, on the road. Um, and so at the end of the day, like, it becomes effectively, it's the right thing to do. Uh, we have an opportunity with this technology to help through simulation, through technologies like IoT Fleetwise and Data Lakes, uh, to provide industry with those tools to build essentially those safety cases of why the vehicles uh, are appropriate to have on the road. And even going beyond just being appropriate to have on the road, like why we need them on the road yeah. and why, the, why everybody needs to have them on the road. Yeah, that's great. And if you think about it, it's just an extension of our sustainability principle, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the right thing, even in that, and it's a very impactful potentially one. Mm -hmm. So. Let's continue to have this vision. And thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciated this conversation. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, Glad Claire. to see you working on this. Let's shed some light on one important aspect of autonomy in the mobility sector, operationalized agility and safety. First thing first, safety in autonomy is the top priority. Initiatives like Aurora's safety case framework can give the public transparency and confidence to accelerate adoption. Second, the cloud allows for amplifying a corner case captured on the field. We can then generate from it a massive amount of simulations, minimizing the need for on-road testing. And lastly, autonomy can be transferable. Learnings from autonomous tracking can be leveraged in use cases like ride hailing. Thanks for joining. See you next time.